Hello, everyone. Okay, we're <coughs> mic'd up. That's a loud microphone. But then I've got this much space to play with. It's fantastic. Um, so uh, welcome to uh, this panel, which has been organised uh, as a collaboration with uh, New Nordic Films and Europa Distribution. I have been partners now for some years, going back to 2015. Um, and it's a partnership that I know is uh, hugely appreciated by uh, both sides, but uh, distributors have, have, um, have found this a place um, that I think touches on the, the discussion today, a place where a lot of new ideas, a lot of new talent and great film has emerged over the last uh, few years. Um, so uh, just quickly, just one little thing on the panel. We did have more people who were going to be here, so it's coincidence that the women on the panel, uh, unfortunately, were the ones, coincidentally, who were uh, COVID-affected, so we don't do all-male panels normally, but I'm sure, just for nostalgia reasons, you will enjoy this, <laughs> this trip back into history. Um, it was always like this once, but th 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 thank the Lord for progress. Um, so, the, the, the title of this panel... Um, is kind of uh, how can Nordic films reach an international audience? Uh, the the question, obviously, straight away as well. Um, how will it? How, how are we going to stop? It's it, uh, Nordic films are reaching international audiences on really quite extraordinary levels. Um, I think it's sometimes um, easy to forget that you've got half the population of the the, the UK for all of those countries put together, and. Uh, you know, this is uh, a region that's that's got a genre named after it. That's already pretty cool. But actually, it seems like a whole load of new uh, genres and new approaches are coming in. Uh, I was talking this morning to uh, a friend of mine who's not a film fan at all, but is utterly obsessed by Norwegian disaster movies, which apparently are a, a genre all in themselves. And, uh, and made, I'm told, at the price... Um, of about three PCR tests in uh, Norway, judging by my experience this morning, so uh, and, or or a round of beer. But it's extraordinary the um, the, the the way that that um, that it's progressed. And looking at Norway, uh, I remember being the editor of Screen International in the early 2000s when there was one film coming out of Norway, and there was a discussion of where that would come. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, you know, they were seeing enormous rises. And those rises are, um, as, as I think any look at the hit European films in Europe and around the world will show, um, these are successful films. This is uh, 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 an area where, uh, just for a change, I'm not going to get to do the full misery, which we like to do on panels about film. You know, the, di the disaster, where's it all going to end? Um, this seems to me a region that um, has got a lot to be excited about. Um, and how the question perhaps should be better put, which is how can Nordic films uh, continue to build those international audiences? And how can you ensure that we're not talking here about waves, but we're talking about sustainable reach around the world uh, for films? And that will be the discussion that we're gonna have today. So we have a distinguished uh, panel of people who are going to be right at the heart of, of, uh, of, of that discussion. So at the end there, we have from uh, Portugal, João Paulo Abreu, from, who's um, the MD of Films for You. Hello. Thank you. There's a hello. You could have said that in Portuguese. I think that would have been... Olá. Obrigado por estar aqui. <laughs> there we go. We've, uh, just to show how diverse we are. And uh, Peter Allen from uh, reInvent, one of those, uh, uh, I, I, I guess, reInvent companies in lots of ways. You've got the, um, uh, from, from Denmark, it's, it's kind of packaging and financing and sales, but you're um, the kind of uh, head honcho in the sales department. So uh, a hello from Hello. You. And then we have uh, Marcin Luchai from Poland, uh, uh, Newton Europa Sales in, in, in Poland. Um, and uh, again, I think uh, someone who's uh, already got significant experience, I think, in terms of sales. I, I don't know how you describe yourself, uh, uh, a guru of uh, sales in some way at your company. I'm sure you have a title. No, we always say like we aspire to be Nordic. 
But we're not, <laughs> because we have so many Nordic films. We should make that into a badge. We want to be uh, Nordic. That's uh, mm -hmm. uh, a good stuff. We're nearly Nordic. You had a good go at conquering the UK. I wish, I wish you'd done a better job. We wouldn't, <laughs> we'd still be in Europe. Um, so we have the uh, we, we have Poland, and then finally we have just a little bit further up. We have Hans Cook. Um, and again, uh, Arty Film, I think you, you um, are, are, are distinguished sales agent, someone with long experience, I think, in terms of, uh, of, of dealing with Nordic films. We were here. Distribution. Uh, distribution, sorry. Yeah, what did yeah. I say? Sales. Oh, so easy. You'd, you'd think there'd be a clue somewhere in the, uh, in the title of the organisation that was doing it. So, yes, distribution, apologies. Um, and that is the, the core discussion. Let's start with you, Peter, as you are um, someone who is uh, from this, this kind of area. Give us, you, you know, we, we have talked about um, here in quite positive terms about the way things are developed. Just give us your perspective um, in t in terms of sales. I'm allowed to say sales with you. Give us t in in just why. You know what are the what are the kind of elements that have made up this um, this this kind of trend towards Nordic film. Um, I think it's uh, uh, a lot of different things. I think in in the Nordic uh, region we have a long tradition for uh, filmmaking and and storytelling, um, and and we have had these waves, as you talk about, with the uh, we have the, the classic films, uh, and 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 then the dogma wave, which really put us on the on the map, um, and. Uh, I think um, one thing, which it's of course always the the story, and and that is the core in in all filmmaking, and and I think we're good at uh, finding that um, local um, story with a very universal uh, theme, which is relatable. Um, I also think that right now, uh, what we, we see in, in the past years, um, especially in the Nordic region, has been, um, th there's been a, um, a, a big opening for, for new talent and, and young people, um, which I'm not sure we see in a, such a, a such way in, in other uh, countries. Um, I think we might be a bit bold when um, when um, creating new content and and cherry picking the the new young young talents from the different film schools and giving them opportunities um, and not uh, too contained but also in they get the chance to to really um, explore the the storytelling and and, and the cinematic scene um, in all sorts of, of genres, in, in disaster films and and uh, small art house films, and um, I think that that's uh, a key thing right now um, that we are uh, yeah very open to uh, to to the new generation and giving them a, a chance and hope and and we should because uh, they need to take over uh, and they are. I mean, it, it's there's 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 uh, two or three things in there. I mean, one is it's uh, you you look at uh, at all of those Nordic countries. There are great auteurs from each of those countries, but it seems like it's less auteur driven the uh, the 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 Nordic trend than others. Those those auteurs are still very big, of course, but it still feels like there's less dependence on just a small number of the big names to hold together. The whole of um, you yeah. know the whole region. Well, definitely, and uh, we of course still have those auteurs, and 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 um, which has been making the all the, the the big Danish films for and and Norwegian and Swedish films for the past uh, 10, 15, 20 years. But but uh, it's right. I think there's um, um, a, a shift right now, um, and um, yeah. And do, do you think that there's co the, co the cooperation between the Nordic countries is now much more systematic? I mean, it, it, you know, whilst there is, you know, we talk about Nordic, it is a lot of distinct countries as well. I mean, there's big differences between Denmark and Iceland, but is, is there a sense of cooperation and common purpose within the Nordic region? 
Mm, I think that like every country in the Nordic region has their own stories to tell, which is important. Um, I think uh, uh, one common thing um, which has made the success of, of Nordic film is, of course, the, also the language. Or maybe not the success, but the accessibility. Um, people outside of the Nordic region has been uh, has gotten used to hearing our language. We all know how it is sometimes to be presented uh, f for an, a new film in a language we have never heard before. It, it can be a bit distracted. Um, Right now, with all the, the streamers, it's, it's being more and more common. But since we have such a, a long story of, uh, of uh, storytelling, and also with all our, our TV series, um, people have, for many, many years now, gotten used to, to listen to especially Danish and, and Swedish and Norwegian. Uh, and I think also Icelandic now, with the, when the trap came, uh, that mm -hmm. opened the whole world uh, for, for Iceland. Um, Finland as well uh, has really um, been put on, on, on the map, uh, I think, the last couple of years. And uh, it's a language I'll, I don't think I'll ever understand it, but I'm also getting more used to listening to it. Uh, yeah, th th there's probably also an argument through the streamers that dubbing has got considerably more successful. And certainly from English, from from um, most of those Scandinavian, I mean, Finnish obviously has a very s distinct language, but a lot of those Scandinavian languages um, actually are very successfully dubbed into uh, into English. I think so. Maybe there's an element of, of that in there as well. I, I just I, I just want to touch on the last thing that you mentioned. So you know, the storytelling tradition we understand. You know, you, you can talk about storytelling in the. Um, in Nordic regions, we could be going back thousands of years, and I wouldn't expect you to uh, <laughs> talk us through all those thousands of years. <laughs> but I think the, um, a lot of the discussion in, in countries is really, uh, you talk about the development of young people, and I think we can throw in there the notion of diversity too, which is um, it's talent that isn't being forced into uh, a, a very narrow kind of way of looking at it. and. Uh, you know, some film institutes can be quite Stalinist, I mm -hmm. think, in the way that what they're trying to do is to get everyone to think the same way. But from, from you know, your, ex, your um, understanding or the way you're expressing it, there is a, a trend coming through towards just allowing a bit more freedom for these younger people. Maybe give us a bit more yeah. idea how that's happening. Uh, yeah, but, but definitely, I think there's so many uh, new, strong voices uh, which uh, needs to be heard and, and which luckily gets the chance to be heard. And, and that has come with also some of the, the, the streamers, but also um, all these short format series being produced in, in I think it was probably uh, Scam which uh, opened that ball. Um, and uh, and that has really been um, a platform or a launch launch pad for for a lot of, of uh, newcomers to the industry who has been able to express themselves and uh, with these uh, new strong voices uh, in a way which was um, affordable for the, the the channels and the, the um, streamers and um, and and they were because of that, ready to, to take that risk. And, and I think it paid off. And that has made it um, uh, opened uh, a lot of possibility for, for, for new talent, I think. Uh, and, and maybe also given, um, uh, the, like, uh, yeah, up, um, never mind. <laughs> okay, that, that that expresses it perfectly. I, I think that the um, I, look, we'll, we'll we'll move on. So, so you've given us a picture of um, a, a, a dynamic, diverse uh, region where people are acting within their individual countries, but there's a general feeling that there is something happening always in the Nordic regions. It's not. It's we're not now just talking about the Nordic noirs. We're talking about a whole load of new things coming through. Fantastic. The question really here for distributors um, is, 
really about how that then plays out because there is a sense, I think, and we'll come to you first on this, Hans, that there is a feeling that there is uh, something specific about Nordics that, that, that is recognised by audiences and that makes it attractive, I think, in terms of distribution. So maybe you could give us your perspective as someone uh, who's distributing this kind of work uh, from... from uh, and I think you've got something to show us in terms of... Uh, <coughs> yes, um, I think that um, when I when we look at Nordic movies uh, in the past uh, 30, 40 years, it used to be um, the Nordics were famous for child and for kids, uh, and they were always successful in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and that was what Nordic films were in the Netherlands. Um, then there was gradually a change with the dogma uh, that was the first wave um, when non-youth uh, uh, films were getting popular. And then a third wave, let me call it like that, uh, started I think uh, almost 20 years ago when there was an enormous interest in, in books. I see a parallel with the popularity of um, the, um, the novels, the crime stories from the Nordics. Not like the literature from 70s, 80s, but like the Millennium, uh, which was launched I think 20 years ago, that was a huge success in my country. And then people started to realize, oh, for crime and for good uh, written crime, we don't need only the American or the British uh, um, uh, novels. We can also uh, read the, the novels from uh, the Nordics because they are really clever. And the situation was uh, as situated in the north uh, in wintertime. It, it has this a specific sphere which we recognize as a European, the houses, and apart from America, America is so different in their city building than, than Europe. So, to my opinion, like after the dogma was in the 90s, we got the third wave, which started to getting popular together with what uh, Peter says about the language. Um, normally, um, the, the films in the Netherlands were very much English dominated, of course, French and then you had German and Spanish, uh, the four main languages in the world. But then it started to gradually that, that Danish and Swedish, okay, that is, it's, it's, that's not horrible to listen to. Uh, for, uh, don't forget me, uh, don't, don't, uh, I don't want to offend, but it is, um, it was, and gradually when you hear that many and more and more and more times, then you get used to it. And then you get the TV series, like the Wallander, like the Killing, like the Bridge and Borken. And all these series were enormous popular. So the people in the theaters were getting warm for, for content from the Nordics. I have um, a slide here with a figure. Then you can see um, the, the movement from the percentage in, in the market share. But let me tell you this first. Um, we have around um, annually 35 million uh, admissions in the Netherlands. But 80% of the 35 million is mainstream driven. So that's still. American, uh, the Hollywood studio. So the 20% is art house cinema. So the share of Nordics is really small, but it is compared to the 35 million. So <coughs> I start with uh, 2012. Then there were seven, seven uh, Nordic films were released in cinema. This, uh, this is not TV, this is theatrical. Um, by the way, the best scoring film was Love is All You Need, a Danish movie with Pierre Brosnan. Um, but then you see a few years later, you see almost that the, the market share is doubled. Um, also more films are released. Um, the Square, of course, a Swedish movie, was the, the best film in 2017. Uh, the Guilty uh, in 2018 and in 2019 it was a kids movie um, and Queen of Hearts, a Danish movie. What you see is, for example, Queen of Hearts, to my opinion, that is a drama which is made in Denmark about a very uh, delicate subject, eh, about uh, a, a, an adult woman who is uh, sleeping with a minor, uh, um, the, 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 the friend of her uh, son, which is a very delicate subject.
effects, uh, which is also uh, running now in society. But to my opinion, th how this film is made, how sensitive and how delicate the, the subject is treated, that's the way why Nordic films are successful. It is done with care, with, um, with a lot of uh, emotion in it. It's not, it's not ordinary, it, it's not, uh, what, how do you say, uh, blunt. Or, uh, and that's what I recognize in a lot of Nordic films. The, either it's a drama or a comedy or uh, a thriller, it's done with care. The content is really, really, uh, it's a high quality cast. Um, so we grow from, to my opinion, like uh, the Nordics producing like uh, movies and TV series for kids, like in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and you, the production grew to adult uh, uh, movies. Uh, you have the large production of the books with a crime theme. Um, when I look at this as a library, when I go into a library in my city, and I go to the, the section of the crime or the, or the, uh, the detectives, I see a lot of um, uh, Nordic names. I immediately know, ah, that is, that is somebody from Sweden or from Finland or from Norway or from Denmark. And I'm always more interested because I know uh, it's quality. It is, it's good to read. Um, so that is a driver for the success for the films too. Um, yeah, the TV series which I mentioned, which are which are really popular, um, and of course uh, what Peter says, the growing production. It is also, um, I think, in a country uh, which is um, stimulating uh, pr producing of TV and film. Okay, then you get a more a higher production. Uh, so um, in the Netherlands, audience is more into Nordics because of its growing popularity and the language. We always subtitle, by the way, so we hear the speaking. We don't dub. Yeah, only the, 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 the film for uh, kids from four or five years, of course. So we are getting used to the, uh, to the Nordic languages. Um, and me, as a distributor, we have done uh, in the past uh, several um, Nordic movies, uh, we bought them because the risk is lesser. Uh, um, it's not like um, the language people don't want to see in the cinema, like we, we have done uh, a couple of years ago some movies from Bulgaria or from Romania, um, which were really good. But I noticed still a barrier for the audience to go to these movies because of Maybe the language, maybe um, I, I cannot explain it either. But uh, for Norwegian and Swedish, then it is that's finished. Our most successful uh, Nordic uh, releases uh, was a few years ago Out of Nature, Mod Naturen, a Norwegian movie. Hearthstone from Iceland was a big, big success uh, for us. Um, last year, Barn, Beware of Children, the Barn, Norwegian movie, very high quality, with uh, very much interest also for schools. And we're doing, in November, we release a Danish movie, Persona Non Grata, uh, which is released in July in, in Denmark. Um, it's m more lighter uh, movie, but also a movie which brings, uh, like, the subject of the countryside and the city life, which every country itself also recognizes the, the, the distinction and, the, and how people judge each other on this theme. So, um, yeah, for me, we, uh, we are already convinced and we are always looking for good content from the Nordics. Yeah, I, I, there's, there's a couple of really big things come out. One is, is, it's not just about language, is it? We're talking about cultural familiarity. We've, maybe we've got used to watching certain types of things, and, and it is books, and it is music, and it is film, and it's not just one thing. So your audience uh, will already feel a sense of being at home in, in, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of Nordic content, maybe more than they would with some other parts of, uh, of, of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I think is interesting, and I wonder whether it, it, it can be put as clearly as this. I was looking at the Danish, so the Danish film uh, films during the, the pandemic, and obviously it was a peculiar situation, but getting more than 50% of market share is uh, still a truly extraordinary performance even then. But looking at it, it feels to me like uh, part of the trick 
um, that, that you're talking about is it's like the intelligent mainstream. It seems to me sometimes Europe has, has gone all, you're either hardcore over here or it's American blockbusters over here. But it feels like through uh, the TV and the crime and the rest of it, there's a kind of sense of that they've captured an element of, main, of, of mainstream culture, but without really it being compromised in terms of intelligent storytelling. Is, do you think that would be fair... Um, from your point of view, yeah. Well, like, like I said, uh, when we uh, look like uh, at a movie or a series from America, it is always more different uh, because it's not our society. The city building is different. Yeah. The the way people live is different. The shopping areas are different. So, what is recognizable within the Nordics, it is more like it's it's the same as us. Of course, the the architecture is different, but city uh, the city life is the same as 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 we know so it is uh, recognizable uh, for us and then when the quality again when the quality is good yeah. the story is the, 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 the telling of the story is good then it can can have a success yeah it's it's it's, it's interesting let's let's move to portugal with uh, Jorg. so you, you 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 i guess you're at, uh, at least at the other end of Europe, so perhaps less of that commonality in terms of um, of culture. But tell us about the Nordic experience there and, you, and your sense of the market. Well, uh, Portugal is a 10 million uh, people country. Uh, our cinema's experience are quite driven to popcorn and blockbusters. And uh, unfortunately, is is as it is. Um, the Nordic films, traditional were played in uh, art house circuits during many, many, many years. And they always recognized as uh, uh, good movies, good directors, good stories. And th there was a, 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 a share of uh, cinema goers that want to, to see this type of, of, of films. Uh, I think uh, most of uh, as here are professionals, and you know that we have the the potential cinema goer, we have the cinemas, we have the distributors, and we have producers and sales agents. Sales agents. This has to be seen all all together. What I want to say is that there are there was there, there was and then there, there, there is potential for Nordic films in 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 Portugal, but. First, there is a need for the distribution to take the risk to import and to license the, the films. The second barrier that uh, we need to cross is that we have to convince the bookers from the cinemas to play the films. And if all this, uh, uh, all, with all this, uh, this, 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 uh, this pass, the, scene, the, the films will become available for the audiences. We start in 2015 with the first uh, Norwegian disaster movie, Bolgan, The Wave. We did quite well. Then we did the second one, we did the third one. And we have building these audiences and we have also uh, established close relationship with some difficult bookers that are used to book American films, English spoken. And uh, when, when they saw a Nordic disaster movie, they, they even care. They don't want to come and to see the movie. So they were quite reluctant. But we try, we try. And this is, I think, a, a work that has to be long in the long term. You, you cannot expect results in the short term. But with that, then we release Guilty. We released uh, in last April, Drunk, another round. And these films went uh, quite successful. I think that also in during the lockdown and this in the last uh, these two years, the fact that the people are at home, and in Portugal we have a, a, a very high numbers of uh, subscribers on Netflix and the HBO, and the word of mouth of the Nordic productions is so good that people start to talk and people start to see a Nordic series, which is quite positive, and we in cinema will benefit from that. It, it's interesting the um the because you know we we tend to be very negative about the impact of of um of vod platforms in terms of cinema but the story you're telling there i think is very significant which is it's exposed a lot of people to 
um, uh, work that perhaps they wouldn't know. And, and there is a kind of star system even. I'm sure there's only 20 actors in the whole of um, Scandinavia, because every time I'm watching a film, I'm like, what, what were they in? And then you, have, you, you, you go rushing back. But it, it, there is that sense of um, that the TV, the series has kind of begin to, begun to build up familiarity, which it, it, you know, are, are bookers beginning to get this in their head? Are they beginning to start thinking, okay, I, I now know what you're talking about? Is, is that what's happening? Are, are they now yes, understanding? Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the reaction is, is quite, is quite uh, positive. I think the, the growth of the streaming, the streaming platforms in the last uh, two years uh, is due to the fact that people cannot go to the cinemas and even the cinemas are open, there was a lack of product because the distributor don't want to take risks mm -hmm. and, and release films. So they took the opportunity and, 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 and they jump and the audiences are there. But I think in the long term, the relation between the cinemas distributor and platforms is, is, is positive because they are also helping to bring audiences to the cinema. Because a film, a film, a good film, is something to be seen in the big screen. You can see a film at home, but it's not cinema. Cinema has to be seen in the big screen. And that's the message that we are trying to pass, and I hope we, we, we can cooperate together with, with streaming platforms. And, and do you feel, I mean, one of the, the concerns, I think, for a lot of people about the growth of streaming, and obviously um, the, the Nordic region is perhaps the home. I mean, this is where the streaming has reached its its highest level. Do you still feel there's a lot of cinematic work coming out? Because uh, the concern was always that we would end up with people who were great for TV but didn't understand the scale of cinema. But are you is, is, is that reflected in any way with you, or are you still seeing great cinematic work? I believe in cinema, and I believe in the future of the cinema. And, and, I have but no thoughts yeah. about that. Okay. Let, 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 let's move to to, uh, to, to Marcin. So, again, I guess you're a cross and down. So, from a Polish perspective, I mean, you, you uh, t t tell me about your experience and your feeling about uh, Nordic films in terms of distribution in your country. I mean, uh, Nordic films are super super popular in in Poland, and it's mainly. I think it, there is a lot of factors. Like first was the music that been. It's only not only about Aha and Abba, but it's also like the whole electronic scene and the Icelandic scene and the Swedish electronic music that became like a mainstream in the clubs in the cities. That was the thing. Then the books, as uh, Hans mentioned, and a lot of stuff. And I think like uh, we like one of our first hits was Rams, the Icelandic film, which was like a huge hit in Poland, like about two old guys and the sheep in the middle of nowhere, and <laughs> it became. A film that you know my mom was going and her friends were going and they were like, and you know like a major televisions were buying this you know which wasn't really the case before of this tiny art house film of the director that no one heard no one have seen these actors and you know and this kind of a light I would say like an ironic subtle social tales that I think the Nordics are really good at uh, they became a brand itself and for us as sellers. It, they also build a trust within distributors that the distributors, I think if would go for the same script set in Serbia or Romania, then, and you go in Sweden and Denmark, I think everyone has a slightly different picture of it, how it will look. And it's also like, I think a lot of like, for instance, Icelandic films are suffering that, I don't think you can name one urban drama from Iceland. Everyone's like rural mountains, sheep and all the stuff, you know, but it's, except like one one Reykjavik, I don't know, 20 years ago, something like this. And this is, I think, it's also, because we did like one called Under the Tree, and I remember a lot of distributors were also like, oh, it's set in a city, they have a city. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it's been very, you know, because this is what we are used to, and it's same, you know, come to, to Sweden or Denmark, you know. I remember like when we, I was watching with friends who had not, nothing to do with the film, about the killing, like for instance, we were watching together, they were like, it looks like really from a proper noir from like, yeah, yeah. you know, Los Angeles at night, like the Copenhagen portrait this way, you know, they've never been there. And I think this is like, it's sort of like a national branding that the, I think here it's very much explored. And since I think there is a lot of flirt with genres, it's become more accessible, but even, I think there is a still a big number of like social dramas being produced here that we never get to see, that they just stay locally. Uh, that 
you know, they tackle like very local topics, and I don't think the Nordics are exporting it. But it's you know, it's one of the things that we talked. It was of course Nordic noir that I think the new talents are playing with it. You know, they're taking it on a different level. Another thing, of course, was the Viking things that became big. But it's right now what we also discussed yesterday, you know, all the folk horror films that, and all like a elevated genre, whatever you call it, you mm. know, that for instance, you know, it started with Let the Right One In, then you had Border, and like named a couple of hits. And right now we work on Lamp. And when you also said about the actors, like we have Numi Rapaz who plays in Icelandic, and a lot of people think that it's a film in English because Numi is there. You know, because she made majority of her roles in English, being originally Swedish. But no one knew that she actually speaks Icelandic, mm. you know, that she grew up there. And this also helps, you know, and I remember discussions, especially the American market, that we, we sold it to A24, which is a huge studio. Uh, but for them, it was a huge value that, you know, it's, a, it's the whole rooster of American, uh, like, of the native talents that are getting very popular. So, yeah. so when, you, when you're looking at, uh, sales, international sales. Uh, I mean, we don't. We tend to try to avoid that word brand, but y you seem to be suggesting for lots of parts of the world, it is a brand. You know, Scandinavia, the Nordics, is now something distinct. Is, is there a danger that it kind of gets stereotyped in there too? That there's an expectation that may be limiting of uh, of what Nordic means, or or, have, or or has it gone past that stage now where we want everything to be noir and closely lit, or is it a quality mark now? And I think, I don't know, maybe it's from the distributor perspective, I don't think people buy anymore like, okay, it's a Nordic noir, it's gonna work, because it got so many productions like this. So it's, it used to ha start to be very selective because it became repetitive at some point. And I think, you know, but there are new, uh, you know, it's different when I come from, for instance, from Poland. When you pitch a social drama from Poland, we know what it is. It's dark, it's some domestic violence, whatever. Like, it's the <laughs> hardcore Eastern <laughs> Europe. And you go to Romania, and you know, it's like a three hours dinner, Christy Puyo, like, you know, do the subtitles, you know, you paid for the translator way more because the dialogues are 150 pages. And it's a slightly different difference when you go to the buyer saying, like, I have, uh, if you would pitch, for instance, like a Queen of Hearts set in another country, yeah. it would be a completely different film, you know? There would be like, how, you know, no one would be expecting to be, to play sort of like on a Verhoeven type of uh, humor that it's a very troubling to watch, you know? Because actually, like, the, the guy is her stepson, in the, like, but technically not. But it's like, if you, if I'll go to the buyer and say, like, no, this is the film set in Serbia, and, you know, She's like a victim of a war and stuff. It's a completely, when you go with the Nordics, they know like, and when they read, I mean, I think a lot of buyers will believe that it's actually accessible. That when, of course, I don't say like people in Eastern Europe or Portugal or somewhere, they can't produce it, but I think it's, it's longer, like from our side, it's big work, like actually to sell the bullshit that it's gonna work. You know, in a way that with the Nordics sometimes, it's slightly easier, you know, and it's, and the exact example was for us, like we did Lamb, which is an insane film, <laughs> uh, but it's because of success of Border and the Let Dry Win, a couple of others, people were like, we have an audience for this, and the audience is both theatrical and VOD, and, you know, people, they also look what worked, you know, like they, especially with the series bigger companies, and distrib which distributors are, I mean, you always, as a distributor, look at the, your market, your figures, your data, and, you know, like, we know that some of these films, like, for instance, they don't work, like, in Asia, for instance, you know, it's a slightly completely different mm -hmm. market, or in China, but they work, for instance, like, stuff like Lamb, and we know that they're gonna work really well in South Korea and Japan that have a huge history of genre films, uh, but, for instance, there's no such a history in other countries. No, it, it's, it's really interesting because what you're pointing to there is the idea that there's a kind of quality mark here, that there's an expectation that something which on paper looks difficult or not immediately accessible, if it comes from Poland, I might have a different expectation, even if exactly the same film has come from from Denmark. And, and, that, uh, and that, is, that is a very big deal when we're looking at international audiences. It takes a long time to get to that point where you feel um, that the confidence is there 
in in giving things a go. Um, but but it does feel to me like that's not been exploited in a lazy way by a lot of the Nordic countries. It feels to me like that quality mark is something taken seriously so it's not we're just going to do the same things over and over again uh, they're coming back to you with different different kinds of content and different kinds of work. I think what's better also mentioned about the new talents I think I remember for instance when I started the film history like and everyone was like so fed up with for instance with Bergman and that was the moment when uh, Ostlund arrived as a you know like yeah, new yeah. interesting and everyone you know it was when one of the genre of director became academic or scholar, like, and you have to learn it, and you have an exams on Bergman trilogies, yeah, yeah. and you don't know which one is it already, and then you have the new wave, you know, and this is and the new talents, and this is the same what we've been discussing, like that. For instance, I see also the big wave of Nordic comedies, which are, you know, it's I'm I'm for instance a huge fan of really dumb French comedies, which has a brand, and they are like dumb to the level that you really don't have to think at all. <laughs> and, and you know, but they are like super successful in a lot of territories. Uh, but, and they are keep on going, you know, it's always, Isabelle Huppert is always working there. And it's becoming the same in the Nordics, like that with the even, up, I remember like how, uh, how Adam's Apple was a big film. And like he started to do way films these days and people go and people like recognize actors like Nicolas Bro in Poland like people like this is the Nicolas Bro and I think this is one of the few countries that people know who is in actually Nicolas Bro you know like of course we know all the Skarsgård and stuff but it's as we said about the actors and it's the same with Numi because of Millennium and stuff that she's doing for streamers for instance like we are I think piggybacking also what they do for the branding of of being recognizable and actually to trust, you know, that it's the same as with with books and like for instance, you know, there was a big wave of these folk tales and Oop. does it work? Oh it works. And then you have, you know, like now we have the Northman coming up, like Roger Edger movie that it's written by the same guy who written Lamb and it's a movie of like a hundred million dollars with an insane cast coming mainly from Scandinavia. And you know, it's, it's lifted to the level of 100 million, but then it's also like when you look at disaster films from Norway, they're made for like 5 million. And I, w I wish we could see, or like when you look at the film like Guilty, like when you said about talent, for me, it's been always interesting. In Denmark, like New Danish Screen became a brand for itself. And it's the same in Sweden, it was a moving Sweden, like this super low cost, super low cost for here standards, like in Poland, it's a proper debut budget. Uh, but you know, there were four or five talents a year that may broke through. Yeah, it, 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 it's interesting. I, 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 you know, we, we the brand, and I'll, I'll come to uh, showing our hands about this as well, because I think the notion of, of the brand of, of Nordic is kind of um, difficult, but it's still got to be good. I mean, I, I think sometimes I watch um, uh, uh, occasional films from even places like Iceland think. Um, British humour was meant to be the big thing, but actually they do. I, there's a lot of irony. Comedies that travel are extremely rare, but there seems to be a comedic um, element, you know, a kind of um, ironic thing that I, I thought was our culture, but um, we don't do that anymore. We've uh, we've way past that stage. But I wonder if you recognise hands that that feeling of. Um, of, uh, of a brand mark now that's very firmly established but has lots of diversity underneath that kind of brand of, of Nordic. Um, I totally agree. It is the way um, you position, uh, especially, uh, well, again, the books, uh, the, the newest crime from, from Scandinavia, which is written on the cover. So people are using it in, uh, to, 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 as a selling point. Uh, but on the other hand, um, for our, um, I told you we are launching Persona no Grata in November. It is we will not launch it as a Danish movie. So it is not always because it, the movie itself is good. Yeah. It, it has 
already uh, um, gone higher than, than the image you need. It is quality on its own. I think, I think we are already in a stage that, uh, that you don't need to, to position it uh, always as a Nordic movie. It is, it is uh, a movie from Iceland or it's a movie from Denmark. Like I, uh, I, al I also mentioned, okay, it's a movie from France uh, or from, from the UK. Uh, it's like that. We don't need to emphasize any more to, to it uh, for, for, for us, for film um, uh, marketing. Uh, we will not uh, emphasize that uh, anymore. It, we don't need it. It's more the content and, and, and the story itself which we are selling and which must prove uh, the success. Yeah, so, so it might get you through the door in terms of confidence yeah. uh, of quality, but you've still got to get to that next stage of it being really good. And I, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, uh, Jean, maybe you could point that out. I mean, if something stops being good, uh, that's the danger of, it, of, of a brand of feeling like um, it's a Nordic film, is there gets to a stage where you might think, yeah, they used to be really good a few years ago, but now... Um, you know, I'm not so sure. So you've got to survive. I think you're saying this, Hans. You've got to survive on its own terms. It's got to have that quality um, once it's through the door. Yeah, but but that, um, like uh, a country like uh, France, for example. I know in France uh, they produce uh, 250 movies a year, but um, what we get in the cinema are like uh, 20 uh, yeah, yeah, from those. So yeah. the rest is crap. It's not good enough to, 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 to release. And I think it's, I don't know how many uh, movies are in total produced in the Nordics, maybe 100 or 150. I, I name, uh, okay, you have seen how many is released in cinema. It is, it's like uh, 15 or 20. Yeah. So what we get is the best. That's what we are doing. That's what, uh, what, what he is doing in Portugal, what I'm doing in the Netherlands. We are selecting the best movies. So the crap, which we see nine out of 10, everybody knows in the audience, nine out of 10 movies you see on the festival is not good enough to, uh, to buy for a theatrical release release. Uh, so we get the best of it. Yeah. So I am not afraid that the Nordic as a quality brand will uh, will diminish uh, during the, uh, the times now. Because Cause they'll always yeah. be at this, uh, yeah. uh, a degree yeah. at the top. Yeah. And is, is that your experience too, Joe? Yes, I don't see a major risk on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in Nordic all together there are a new generation of new directors that are coming and are showing very good movies. New acting, new actors acting very good, and the storytelling is amazing. So, and this is a legate. I, I don't see any reason for that to be interrupted or stopped. But, but that was your point, Peter, at the beginning of this: is that um, there are always new talents that are coming through. So, <clears throat> what I, I think where you're getting to as distributors, what you need for the for the Nordic kind of mark to to stay. Um, uh, important is that the top layer of film. So I'd like to go to a, a crap Nordic film festival. Um, if, uh, if we're all the the, uh, the really bad ones, I think that would be a, a fun festival to go to. Uh, I'm sure you're doing terrible ones too. But as long as you have a layer of really good ones. But what you were saying at the beginning, which I think is very optimistic, is that there is this um, feeling that there is new talent coming through all the time. So. That, that top 15 isn't reliant on three directors. Uh, you know, those top films might be, uh, you know, we could see some talent that we've never heard of um, in a couple of years becoming the, the next superstar. Um, and, and I just wonder how they're going about making sure that happens. And is there the, now this feeling of a, of a conveyor belt? There really is a, a way for great new talent and storytellers to reach the top. Yeah, um, definitely. I'm 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 not worried at all, and I'm I'm also happy to hear that our distributors are not worried. Um, I, I certainly think also not not only the um, the directors, but also it's uh, it's almost insane how many talented uh, scriptwriters and and producers. Uh, which are coming out of, of the different schools. Um, right now, we are lacking uh, screenwriters, um, and they are being cherry-picked uh, before they, they finish schools. 
Um, so, um, but, but what's different about because <coughs> that situation isn't true of lots of other countries. Mm. So what is it? What is it about the process? You, you, you mentioned earlier the idea that maybe things like short film have stopped have stopped being this kind of uh, boringly academic um, calling card and have started becoming a genre that's effective in its own right. Definitely, short films. We have a, a big tradition of short films in in. in uh, in the Nordic region as well, and a lot of, of short films festivals uh, in Denmark. I believe we have one of the oldest short films festivals in the world, and um, and they have been. I think in the end, uh, that's the the core that that the young people have been taken seriously, and they are being um, challenged as well, uh, and being believed in. Um, and uh, yeah, no. I mean, it, it it is a nice idea that 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 could work. I just I'm, I'm trying to. Um, I'd like to inject some negativity in here because I'm English, and it just seems wrong to be being so <laughs> cheerful for this amount of time. But there there must be some challenges. I mean, one that seems obvious to me is that. Um, the, the copying, you know, if I look at every drama out of the UK now, uh, every noir-ish drama has to start with some really annoying song that um, over some dark uh, bridge or, uh, or aerial shot, really uh, irritant. But people are copying, you know, you can copy. And, and at the end of it, um, to st uh, the, the truth, as, you, as, as Hans was saying, is there are only X amount of films that are gonna get released in cinemas, and it's a competition, it's a zero-sum game. You've got to stay at the top. And I wonder, what are the dangers that would stop, from, from what you can see, um, the Nordics being still on that top table? That's a good question. Um, I don't know, I, I mean, I think that, um, the world keep changing, and so I'm, I'm not afraid that we are uh, running out of uh, good stories um, and, and, and themes. I mean, the, the past uh, few years, uh, there's been a lot of uh, films coming out about um, uh, sexuality and, and gender, and because that has been a hot topic uh, in, in a few years, it's something else, and then in, 30 years, it might be sexuality and gender again, but in a new way, um, I think we'll always have, have new stories to tell. Um, I don't know. Uh, and I, 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 do, I choose to believe also in, in the cinema uh, still. I think that people will um, choose to watch the the big films on a, uh, on the big screen at least I, I truly hope so um, I would um, but um, but of course it has been uh, it has been interesting to to see and it will be how uh, how the, the pandemic has affected uh, mm -hmm. the whole way of, of watching films and and have we lost uh, some of our our uh, cinema audience uh, to to the streamers? Are people uh, becoming more lazy and just uh, watching it at home? And is it a problem? Um, are people still willing to, to to pay some money to actually watch the the new film before uh, everybody else? Because in in the end, it's also a, a, a matter of money and and. Uh, um, to, to keep the wheels going in, in the film business. Yeah, I can see that, Hans. Yeah, and, uh, one of the dangerous uh, thing is that the production uh, funding, uh, the local, the nation, the, the, the nation funding uh, from the Norwegian Film Fund and the Swedish Film Fund, that they stop or they think, okay, we can uh, withdraw, we can retreat uh, our funding. And then you might get in a situation that it goes down because there's less funding, so uh, so productions have lesser budget to spend on 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 setting, on 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 uh, on, on casting, on whatever, and that can be a danger. Uh, money, money. That there are is uh, the, the production is is that big, that large, that it's spreading. That the film fund has to divide their money about. Uh, over uh, 50 uh, projects instead of 20, 
that can be in danger on the long long term that there is lesser budget to create um, a, a proper movie yeah i mean when when you've got a success story sustaining it sustaining it over the long term is difficult and that money um, the money has to be uh, managed very, very effectively to ensure that you yep. keep that new talent coming through all the time. I see in Haugesund, they just build another oil rig by the look of it and just take it out. I don't know why um, all the oil is still in the Norwegian bit of the North Sea. I thought, they couldn't you just shift it over a little bit? We could do with a bit of that. But, th but there is that feeling, I think, that, um, that, that just having money... Um, is is one thing uh, you know money can go down and maybe that's where your threat comes that, that, that from a distributor's point of view that the cinem cinematic theatrical release is so still essential to the economics and also to the creative kind of work uh, I mean that that's an interesting one to take much in you more positive oh, Hans do you want to Oh, much sure. No, I think it's also one one of the biggest problems. Also, I see that the Nordics are only working within each other. Not only, but it's also the problem is like, for us when we also set up a lot of co-productions and stuff, we could see that we can't really match a Norwegian production with smaller funds. You know, like even France is. N if you don't have a TV there, it's not a competitive. Like they can't bring five or ten percent of the budget of a debut film here, you know, because yeah. it's very expensive countries and the budgets are way higher. And I think this is one of the dangers. And when we talk with a lot of like producers here who want to co-produce, we've got there's a lot of markets and stuff and it's fancy to do it, but they just realize like it doesn't match. Like it's becoming too difficult. And I think this is one of the dangers that it's actually the market I'm, I might tell it's a little bit spoiled in that sense. It's a first world problem but I think it might have an impact on the creative side at some point that it's becoming, and it's, and, the, and it's become, like for instance, I could see in the whole like Eastern Europe when the tax incentives started to be in place, like we started to lack crews for smaller films, you know, and it's here like the more you start to produce and the more expensive, I mean, there will be a, a challenge for smaller films, more challenging, lower budgets actually to get crews that they can afford, or like the level of crews that AJODs that they want to. And I think this is also, you know, I think it's very hard to make a film here for like a half million euro. Yeah, I, I mean, the uh, all, all the things that we're talking <coughs> about here, I think, are the underlying economic issues. Uh, I mean, capacity is clearly an issue in terms of growth, uh, in terms of, 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 uh, of funding for film. And this does eventually get through to distribution because distribution at the end of it needs to ensure that there's a quality flow coming through. I presume there's also an issue there that um, other people were, were trying to up their game. It's not like uh, the Nordics are operating in a vacuum and waves do come through. I mean, we've, we've had Romanian waves and Korean waves and, and I I, I still worry, you know, we, we, we've, everything we're saying here suggests that we've transcended the idea of a wave, that somehow the Nordic region is something which is more sustainable and better than that. But there are other places and, you know, there is a danger of, of boredom and being excited by something else, you know, and uh, something coming out of Korea, for example. And I think it's one of the examples, the great examples about Nordics is the like you, you mentioned kids films and I think at some point Nordics completely dominated the young adults festivals Yeah, that I think uh, Sweden or Norway one generation so many times in Berlin and right now from my perspective when I read a lot of stuff coming I just stop to see differences between them there is only there are a few standouts like Hearthstone was one of them for instance from Iceland that there is I think and it's also the discussion that I had with some festivals they, the coming of age stories out of the region, they become slightly similar, and it's very hard to find this one that would stand out. And especially when you look from the distributor perspective, actually they can release it in theaters, you know. And this is, I think, one of. I felt that you know they might need that genre or like that audience need a fresh wave because it really I don't often see the difference of the project that got pitched to me three meetings before than yeah. now. I, to me when you put it in the boxes of the market, because we don't communicate with the audience, like the market, and when you do the benchmarks and stuff, you basically use the same, you do the copy-paste, you know? And that's becoming really, 
difficult because it, it works on the short term. It doesn't work on the long term, you know, that people... No, and, and, and that's where the talent has to keep coming through, which is, I think, what Peter was alluding to. But you can become a victim of your own success, that suddenly you, you just... It suddenly becomes... Uh, you know, Nordic film stops being a brand, starts becoming a cliche. It becomes the same thing. I would, I would argue that there was a period of Nordic noir TV series where there were just too many that felt kind of the same, which I think is your, your point. There's a, it, it eventually can just become... It's like in the UK, you still have Ken Loach. You know? <laughs> And it's he keeps same, going, same, but different. <laughs> he keeps going, but no one watches Ken Loach in the UK. You know, oh. Ken Loach is uh, is a huge in France, much bigger in France than he is in the UK. But no. I understand that there's a there's a classic of a of an auteur uh, upon which a whole you know when when we say what is British film these days, Ken Loach tends to be. Uh, the, the one of the kind of main planks that you're, you're putting all of it on, and yet it, he's very atypical of the stuff that's coming out of the UK. But again, you know, you could argue these are first world problems, but actually, that is, I, I think, what you're alluding to is a, is a serious danger that other people also want their waves. And I, 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 I recall the Korean wave, you know, that whole old boy period where there was a real excitement around that, but the Hong Kong film for a while. There is that um, always at the back of everyone's head should be there's a, someone else wants your your crown. Um, anyway, I was I was also thinking one of the things that holds together is these with uh, Scandinavian films. They're all um, ridiculously good looking as well. So in, I feel in uh, you know in being British, watching all these uh, gorgeous tall um, Nordics of uh, it seems it just seems it, j it just makes me feel. I don't know. I just it's 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 all wrong, and I'm sure that has something to do with the uh, the appeal as well. Um, and on that note, I'll open it up to our, uh, our ridiculously good-looking audience, obviously. So, is, is anyone? I mean, I'm interested in your experience as well. If you've got points, particularly about where uh, you know those that new those new voices might come through, or maybe you have a film here that that you'd like to um, share some thoughts on. Anyone got any points you'd like to make? Can't believe shy Nordics. I'll write that down as uh, <laughs> that's going to be my uh, my next thing. No one's got anything at all. That's that that's yes. Here we go. Can we? Can you grab a, a mic just so it'll? Oh, I'll have to repeat the question. So you tell me, and I'll tell them. Yeah. And are you finish? Well, uh, he's still go he's still uh, going for strong. Uh, and uh, yeah. um, uh, what influence do you think he has uh, made for the Nordic uh, films? And are you general? from Finland yourself? No, no. I'm, okay. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's it's it, it's a very good way of keeping the overall question going about Ota. So Karismaki was the the big star for for, for some time obviously the, you know the, the it's been around for many many years but where you have a dominant uh character like that who has who's clearly influenced a lot of people it's interesting how that stuff goes through so hans you know charismatic well, for me he was the second wave i was telling about he was in the 19s <coughs> with the dogma and the last one here he was from uh, Scandinavia, the representative of, of the cinema for in, in my country. But then he, uh, okay, he produced m movies and then he f slightly faded away. Uh, he had lesser success with his films and then the third wave started. So I think he is one of the, of the layers of the current success, definitely. He opened the doors uh, for the rest of the Nordics to become popular. It's, 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 is there anything in the unique voice, well, uh, Karismaki, is there anything, because that, in business terms, that's certainly true, that he opened up the market uh, and opened up the idea, I think, of, of uh, uh, certainly Finnish film, but actually Nordic film more generally, he, that, he was certainly that way, but is there anything in, in um, also in creative terms that you look at and think there's an influence that's carried on that as a distributor your audiences love? Karismaki is one, but there are other ones. Roy Anderson, Thomas Winterberg, Ruben Worsland, very good directors. 
And and and, and t- you know, it, do you do you feel now that I mean, someone like Ruben Oslin, for example, has become huge. At, at what stage do they start being established as as the talents that that you can rely on over and over and again? And who who's the new Oslin with the square? For yeah, sure, for sure. The second movie was uh, was uh, was very good. And and do you see that that uh, auteur tradition carrying on though? Is there so you know all the ones you name have been around for a while now. You know it's it's, it's still producing good works. But what you want is to be able to talk about the next one and the next one. You want that there to feel uh, always a feeling there are pretenders as the superstar, the next superstar coming through. I guess Ruben austin has got a few more. I think cinema goes uh, in Portugal. When they saw a film that is directed for one of these uh, Nordic directors, they see it as a recognizable value, so they want to see it. And so far, the critics have been good, and they have been placed in very good festivals. I don't see any particularly threatened here. And is that is the festival still critical from from yes. your point yeah. of view? So yeah. success at festivals, yeah. which we Marley. haven't talked about here really, but the <laughs> festival success is enormously important to getting into that top tier. Oscar from Academy, for instance, with uh, Thomas Winterberg, we drank. Yeah, it was very it was very good for him. Yeah, I mean, I know in uh, Poland there actually are, uh, people talking about Scandinavian festivals, there are whole festivals there. I mean, tell us a little about the festival scene and how important that might be to sustaining the uh, the Nordic wave. I think it's in a lot of countries in the, in the US. There's also a big one in New York. And I think because there's so much films that there... And I know about myself, like when I was 12, 14, I was like a big Nordic geek that, you know, and you go for music and, and you go, start to dig deeper and deeper and start to, and I think this is like a big culture. And it's also like when you look at Cannes this year, there was like six or seven yeah, films yeah, yeah. from the Nordics. And when you say, I think about Finland, we had Kauris Maki for many years, but now I think maybe the market is slightly faster than an audience. Like everyone is looking at Juho Kusaman, like what he's doing next. And the same in Denmark about like Ali Abassi and a couple of other people who are, you know, before their 40s or that they already made the name like Juho with the second film being in the main competition yeah. in Cannes and sharing it. The award of Ashkar Farhadi, who's like the name in the industry. This is also like a very interesting shift, you know, that I think... I remember I, I was talking with one of the programmers of one of the fall festivals, and I was like, what do you have there in the Nordic? And he was like, nothing, like everything went to Cannes, you know, like we've got nothing left. In a sense, you know, that, that there was so many in Cannes, which I yeah. don't think any other, even in America, didn't have that, like that representation across the sections, across the genres. It was really, I think that was the, like the, you know, cherry on top, like this year yeah. in Cannes, and they all, sold you know like they were all got an interest from yeah we're, we're, we're back to the relentless positivity which is which is true that if you can um both have the auteurs that are there at cam but still feel that underneath that there's that distributors trust the brand that they'll allow those new talents to get a chance that's that that seems to me a very sustainable system but but peter do you have a festival strategy you know when you're looking at festivals it seems to me that uh, the, the, that managing festivals and getting to festivals and getting those films as a result of festivals is something that uh, all of the countries in this region seem to be particularly good at yeah yeah uh, well i think we uh, well i know that we we uh, have a very strong uh, collaborations with with uh, like here in the Nordics, all the, the the film institutes here and and the sales agents and uh, we uh, we collaborate with with most festivals and uh, and have a long tradition also of uh, of uh, having films at uh, at all the festivals. So I also think that when the big festivals they they look for film, they they do look to the Nordic region uh, as. as one of the places where they 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 know they can find something and and would like to some find something um, 
of course they can't uh, pick a film for from each territory in the whole world but uh, but I, I definitely think that they are looking towards the Nordics because uh, they know that uh, that we have some some pearls um, and and uh, for for each film we we of course uh, make a, a very specific uh, strategy for for the festivals which is uh, crucial for for a lot of uh, the films and, and and the directors and and what makes uh, these directors uh, break through um, yeah and 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 presumably hands that that's where the festivals are still where you're seeing i mean it, it, do you recognize that that can now has become a uh, it, it certainly has a very strong nordic feel to it when you're there well, I think it's not, I don't know um, how they select, of course, but it's the quality they select. And I think uh, by coincidence or on purpose, it is like six six movies from the Nordics are in, in the festival selection. It's not their purpose to select Nordic movies. It yeah. is the quality of what they select. And what I recognize in my country, um, there is one dedicated uh, Nordic uh, film festival in November in the north of the country, of course, and they select Nordic movies. But um, for the other ones, like in Rotterdam, um, it's not th we want to have Nordic movies, we want to have good movies. Yeah. And then apparently these are from the Nordics. <laughs> and that's the way it goes. And that's the way it goes also in Cannes and in Berlin. Uh, it's not we need... In Göteborg Festival, of course, they need to be from the Nordics. But in in abroad, in in uh, in, in our countries, it is more the quality what's driven, and and by co and it, it proves to be Nordic. I yeah, and, and and that's no accident, I suspect. I think yeah. the uh, the film institutes <coughs> and so on. I think there's a there's a strong festival strategy, and and I think Peter is talking about how young. Uh, talent is coming through. It feels to me like there's there's some smart thinking about placement and where to get people into that to get that attention. Um, and as you say, it just feels like it's ubiquitous. Um, and that's it's that's probably the result of some pretty smart thinking somewhere. Um, anyone else got any points they'd like? To? Yes, one of the front here. Um, you said the appeal of Nordic films, at least in uh, the Netherlands, is because they, their similarities. But uh, do you see an appeal in Nordic films as being exotic? Uh, is there something, uh, some qualities about, uh, you know, we have a wave of um, indigenous uh, films uh, and that sort of content. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, I think, um, yeah, that, 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 that is, of course, uh, a choice for the consumer to buy a ticket because they want to be entertained, they want to, to see a different variety, they want to see a different scenery, and they want to have a theme which is interesting. So all these are the choices to go to, uh, to uh, a film. If you only want plain amusement, you go to a Hollywood production and you entertain yourself. But if you want to have catch a, a message, uh, but you also like to entertain yourself because of uh, you have been on vacation in, in, in a country like in Norway or, or in Sweden and so you want to have the same feeling uh, or you want to want to see you want to experience the Icelandic landscape because it is so different from our own landscape so these are all reasons to to buy a ticket for a movie uh, I think uh, and the, the the strongest thing in the Nordics is that yeah you're the, 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 the landscape the scenery is completely different and if you're from Norway are unique in Europe, uh, Europe, and uh, and the the, the, ho the little horses in Iceland are only there. So there are different, unique uh, positions. Uh, that's why, for example, like uh, for Italian movies, we like the sunshine, we like the Italian uh, vacation, and we like this drama, this family drama. So every country has his his unique uh, positioning. Where consumer, I feel like to entertain myself with this. Uh, in this sphere. I think that is a driver to buy a ticket for that. And then you have, of course, I've heard of the movie, it's such a good one, uh, it's a good laugh. Okay, you have the word to mouth, uh, which is working. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna need to kind of wrap up. The exoticism instantly does, it's not 
about the grand sweep of landscape sometimes. I thought let the right one in was exotic. It, it f feels like there's only one light in the whole, for movies in the whole of, uh, of Scandinavia for a while. But that, that closeness, that sense of um, place, I think is, has been essential. And we haven't really talked about that, but the places themselves, I think, are enormously important in the, the, the appeal of those films. So as you can see, I think... Um, uh, I'm certainly a convicted um, Swedophile, Scandiphile. Um, I think there is something about um, the region which uh, definitely, I think we've been hearing, ha seems to have some kind of appeal that is, that's transcended. And it's gone past, I think um, it's gone past the wave idea. And I thought Hans made a very strong point that growing up, there was, um, I mean, it was, uh, for me, it was things like Moomin Troll, which were extremely scary Norwegian things. I think they're Norwegian, aren't they? <laughs> Finnish. Oh, dear. Yeah. See, what a terrible thing. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was scary as hell, that thing. There was no nothing, no horror film made since then has had the same effect. Uh, and, and Pippi Longstockers, which I know is Swedish, I'm sure I've got that one right. But there is that feeling that then you got this wave, and that wave uh, uh, most definitely made a difference. And that wave wasn't just about uh, films, it was also about TV series, it was about music, and it was about uh, books. There was a feeling of culture, and I think the familiarity of that culture uh, that Joao thought put very well, that, that this is where VOD perhaps can come into its own in the most successful way, is beginning to introduce people uh, and creating familiarity around things that might once have felt uh, challenging. Um, it, and it feels to me there's also an understanding um, that, that's been built up on that, which is uh, the industrial level and the training level and the development level of uh, the, the, um, all of the Nordic countries, it seems to me, have reached uh, a quite an impressive point where festival strategy and where what is being commissioned and most of all, I think, allowing diverse new talent to get their voice is important. Uh, I, and we've been hearing, I think, from all the distributors that there's a feeling of confidence that's come from that. And that confidence is reflected in, in buying strategy. There is a feeling of quality that, that uh, has come out of, of the Nordic region. Um, and you can trace that back and you can say that, uh, you know, uh, you could argue that maybe um, the Nordic regions where horror was invented, you look back at those ancient tales and all the rest of it, this isn't uh, a great thing, but it's, it feels like it's now managed to fit itself into so many cultures around uh, Europe and around the world that it has the potential to sustain itself. Uh, and, and not just to act in waves, to al allow those new ideas to come through. And, and distributors um, have got used to the idea that when they deal with Nordic countries, that there's a quality expectation. The danger is always, of course, that isn't met. And there's also a danger that you're still in competition with lots of other people who are going to try and get up to the level that perhaps you're at. But I think what we're leaving from here is right across from uh, north to south and east to west of Europe, there is a very strong sense that Nordic films uh, have a relationship with audiences that is unique and sustainable. And for now, that seems like a pretty uh, exciting place to be and to leave this panel. So um, thanks to uh, the panel. And thanks to you and to the festival. Thank you.